88 films. All right, we're back. Hello again. Hello again. Another episode. With the drum. the button. Here. Today we have the man behind the camera, Rob. This Say is hi. Rob. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get it. What's going on? All right, so we're going to continue our uh, quick Q&A, so um, behind the scenes back here. So I guess a question that I, I kind of want to ask you guys is uh, what, what, what has shoes brought to your life like that you, thought you, you would have never thought because of like doing this job? Pain. No, I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Pork. kidding. No. Um, a lot of low-key, like, a lot of like growth. In a way, I feel like they've taken me out of good and bad um, situations. Um, so I would say like a good learning experience. Um, obviously, I can say what, but I just, uh, I don't know. I feel like there's certain things that like you think about and you're just like, damn, like if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't do this. You know, like even just as simple as like. My family wanted me to be a sheriff very young, and I chose sneakers over it. So, like, imagine if I chose being a police officer or, like, a firefighter or something at a very young age, we would have never met. Yeah, low-key. Like, stuff like that. I, I think about that stuff certain times. Like, I'm like, oh, like. Or if, how one one action could change the whole course of everything. Yeah, like, for example, what if in round two I said no to New York? Yeah. You know? Like, I would have. Never met Dima, all my good relationships over there, like friendships and stuff like that. Like, that would have never happened. So I always think about certain things like that, but obviously I don't, like, dwell on them. But I'm just like, oh, damn, like, even, like, for not to be a dick, round two sake, if I never, if I was the one that didn't go over there, I personally feel with the people that we had there at round two, round two New York City would have failed, in my opinion. Like, as in, like, I think... There I was, really like, the, I was like the right person for the job, you know, like where I like I had a good eye for like, all right, if the if the three owners eat, I eat the employees eat. Like I had a good mentality about it in a way. But the just the way the shit went down, like in L.A., Miami, vice versa and the other stores were like failed managers and stuff like that. Like I feel like if round to New York City wasn't there these stores you know like because we we made a lot of stores eat through the company but yeah it's just like little things like that where i'm just like if i if i said no to this so but you can't really look at it that way you know yeah um yeah that's a lot of like you said um i think fucking just the lifestyle as a whole i would have never thought just liking shoes growing up and shit would become this and even just having the opportunity to meet some of the people that we've met throughout the years and like some of the experiences that we've got to go through through sneakers whether it be um just going somewhere that i never thought i would step foot in or on like soil whether it's in the states or other countries and shit like that and knowing people even knowing people worldwide through sneakers based on different locations that we've been in or even being able to go somewhere now um not thinking you're ever going to run across somebody that knows anything about you or what you you got going on and people bringing it up like because at the end of the day you know we're just one one person individually and like the world's so fucking big you don't ever expect things to take notice or like i for sure never do anything with the intent of oh somebody's gonna see this it's just me living my life and whatever happens happens type shit but just like the expand expansion of life through just putting on a pair of shoes like i never would have thought that for sure i think that's like the biggest one like just like how trippy it is that just depending on what you have on your feet could fucking start a conversation and you could end up meeting somebody that you never thought you'd be cool with and you end up being the best of friends or you end up be having continuous relationships with them throughout the years and even yeah just the the connections like it's a trip because yeah it just it's just material item at the end of the day but it it fucking resonates with so many different people and things that um yeah it's things that we never i for sure never expected in this world that we're in because 
it was so little of us when we started liking shit and it's still growing every day and it's still a trip to see like the ups and downs and like never like knowing how certain things going to play out but i mean it's all it's all part of the ride yeah got it got it so another question i got you, i got for you guys um uh when, when sometimes when when i'm by the buying counter uh-huh. i hear the customers say something like oh uh i'm gonna get married so i'm selling my shoes or mm-hmm. uh, i gotta pay rent right so like i feel like shoes gets people out of a jam mm-hmm. can you guys tell me of a time where you guys had to sell some shoes to like get you out of a jam or not even that but like maybe take a trip or something like that where like because i feel some 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 people might think uh, like, oh sneakers are dumb but in reality like people have so many sneakers when you come in cash them out you could actually grab that cash and use it towards something where and when what have you guys done like something similar to that i think i do it all the time yeah like before anything big i always like getting rid of like clothes sneakers just because it like at the end of the day some people i would say in this industry messed up by not thinking it was real money yeah. but it's real money at the end of the day like yeah. everything's real like um if i go on a big trip i'm just like let me bring some sneakers to pay for this trip yeah let me i mean i've been in bad situations where like fuck i gotta go figure this shit out i need to fucking go overseas um i've literally sold my turtle doves and stuff like that to get money to go overseas to figure out my life so it's just like there's i feel like for everything i use sneakers so it's a good thing you know like i don't care what anybody says like i've used sneakers and streetwear to get me out of like bad spots good spots anything just like where i'm just like all right i need some bread but so yeah when it happens sometimes i feel like some customers i feel like damn like you feel comfortable telling me this but it's cool you know like they're like i need it i need this because in reality i'm gonna buy your shoes regardless if you're in a jam or not you know or try to if it's good stuff but yeah i think i use it for almost everything like even for new york any any little stupid thing that i'm gonna do oh i'm gonna sell something just because it's I'll get it right back. Yeah, I think um, same thing where there's been times where obviously like throughout life sold everything just because I need money, whatever the hell the case may be. But also understanding like, yo, like as much as we love this shit, it always comes back if you really fucking want it. Like never getting attached to it and remembering that, yo, like, okay, if I had it once, I could have it again if I really want it. You know what I mean? And it's not like as much as we have a passion and we love it we're also not attached to it and knowing that i think is important too because yeah we we even have like sometimes people where they bring us stuff and just based on sentiment they'll be like oh just kidding i won't sell it or you know what i mean or even the opposite where like even yesterday it happened when guys like yeah i'm getting married and i'm moving in with my wife so i gotta downsize my collection so you're gonna be seeing me a lot more and i also gotta pay for this wedding and because he was like, yeah, I don't want to get rid of some of these. But then, like, you know, we go back and forth. We have a conversation. It's like Chris said, like, s- sometimes customers feel super comfortable opening up to us about their life. And, like, same thing. I told them that, too. I was like, bro, like, well, thankfully, like, if you really want it back later, you could get it. You know what I mean? And even I let them know, like, the way the secret market is, shit, you might even get it for less because shit just, that's what it is right now. So, um, yeah, just it's fucking a form of currency at the end of the day, too, on top of it being uh something we like so it's it's a trip how much of like a win-win of it is in that aspect with at least the type of shoes that we sell in like you know got it, got it. so then uh, when people do sell their collections i know i heard you guys say before that you guys prefer for them to bring it like a little bit at a time mm-hmm. because i know sometimes they bring in like 20 and it's like yo like you obviously you want too much um what would you like recommend people to do in that case i think you get more money if you sell them slowly yeah we'll i think five at a time i think like you to get a premium for your sneaker again this is just me paying attention to where we're at riff when somebody would bring in 100 120 shoes we knew that we were going to get it at a good price because that number was going to be so large that that like you're going to be like oh like yeah like somebody brought in 100 shoes and we're like 15k they're like oh shit 15k but they're not going to break it down blah blah yeah but in reality you could have maybe squeezed a couple thousand dollars more like not an insane amount but you could have like for example the guy that brought the yeezys last week that i was mad that we didn't get to buy at <laughs> on the show he squeezed yeah. out an extra four hundred dollars yeah to a lot of people that might not be much but four hundred dollars four hundred dollars you know he squeezed yeah. out by selling it to us and to riff you know like that's ninety four hundred dollars that he got so mm-hmm. 
he split it up. But yeah, it's just like you know that uh, when you get a smaller, you know the breakdown, you know everything, and you're gonna get a more of a premium. Yeah, I agree. Um, it just oh uh, my bad. Uh, yeah, I agree with that because even like yesterday, perfect example. Um, a dude brought in fifty pairs of shoes, and it's like one thing about it is if you want to off everything at the same time, like at the same time us we're kind of gonna think like oh fuck like you really don't care if you what you get for it too because you're willing to bring it all at the same time you know what i mean and not saying that we're gonna violate but it just makes us feel like okay well if we get it if you really don't care then we'll shoot you this number um which is gonna still make sense but um yeah when you get bringing a little bit less amount um especially when it's good stuff the thing is like we try to buy from everybody so that's another reason why I think it's better that people also bring in a little bit at a time because that's why a big reason why we don't do like bulk buys and stuff like that because we want to be able to spread the money throughout like the whole community as much as possible, especially if we got the bread and we know it's stuff that we could sell. Um, so that's yeah. why we always tell people like, hey, like I think the ideal number to bring in at a time is like five to ten because it gives you a good mix of stuff. And even if you come on a weekly basis or like every couple of days, you know, because it also gives us a time to turn it around and it also makes us more inclined to be like, all right, we'll, we'll give you better price, especially if it's good stuff. Um, but like even um, for us, I think one thing that helps too is the people that know that they could hit us up before coming down because that also makes it easier for them. Like, okay, like I could at least know what you guys are going to take from me and save you the haul of, uh, oh shit, like I don't got to bring in 50 pairs and you guys are only going to take 15 or something like that because that happens too. So, um, yeah, no, I definitely think it's better, like, just bringing it in smaller batches. Yeah, I told the bulk buyer that straight up. Like, before, <laughs> I usually I used to beat around the bush. Like, oh, yeah, maybe we could do something. I'm like, look, bro, it doesn't make sense for me to do bulk. Why? Like, not to be a dick, I'd rather have a better selection of stuff. And I think a better selection of stuff comes by from buying from the community because mm -hmm. you have different tastes, I have different tastes, you have different tastes. So everybody's bringing in all forms of shoes. I, t I straight up told him, I was just like, why am I going to buy 10K worth of Asics? Like, yeah, sick picture and everything, but I'm giving you the 10K when I could just break it off w within the community. Um, and I think that you get a better selection through the community. Yeah. And that's before I would be like, yeah, hit me up. And now it's just like, I don't want bulk spider i don't want bulk essentials i don't want bulk a6 or whatever's hot right now you know and uh, people always hit me up and it's just like it's hard you know because i'd rather give that person that's like oh i need this for my wedding or like i have to deal with like a family emergency vice versa yeah so i'd rather do that than just to like how i always say is like i'm not buying shoes from nike straight up like i'm buying shoes from, i'm putting the money back into the community instead of being like oh i get them outsourced through one guy through this major factory whatever's yeah yeah i mean yeah that 10k um figuratively speaking instead of going to one person it could end up going to 10 to 20 people instead depending on how it's broken down whatever and i mean you don't know how that could impact and change their situation too just because you know we were able to help help them and obviously they feel comfortable bringing us their product so all right so another question um as of the last few years, especially recently, people are saying like, oh, the sneaker market's cooked, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think we've seen um, like really good shoes hit like a rock bottom. But then we've also recently, like with this last few months, we've seen those shoes go back up. Mm -hmm. um, what are a, a few pair of shoes that you, could t that, that you could keep in mind like that are low right now that, mm -hmm. you, that you know for sure are going to go up? I like, mean, they're, like not, guaranteed. they're not super low, but... For example, SP4 is the first one. Yeah. That's a good hold because we've seen them steady go up. Even like Supreme Ramos Z low tops, not the high top because not a lot of people are into high tops. Yeah. Um, There's certain shoes that have gone steadily up, but I literally just made the comment like uh, Travis Scott's, the Jordan 1 lows. Nike's about to fucking cook them. Blood the market. Because they're that doing like three, four new pairs. And yeah. I'm just like, Jordan Brand should just take away the Travis Scott name and just put this is the new way, the new look of the Jordan, Jordan Monlo. Monlo, yeah. It's gonna that's how it's gonna look. Because so, go you win? Because that's that's what they're doing, you know. It's just like might as well stop releasing regular Jordan One Lows. Just use the backwards check if that's what you're banking on, you know? Because all those pairs that they're leaking, it's just like, bro, they all kind of look the same. Just 
slightly different tones, you know? So would you say that the Travis Scott lows are going to eventually get burnt out and not retain value? Well, it's kind of hard to say that because that's what we thought with the Phantom. The Phantom was like four or 500 and now it's creeping up to a rack, 900, yeah. 800, whatever. So it, it steady up even the Olives, um, no, yeah, Olive Women's. The Same Canary thing. right now, I, I bought up seven men for $300. Yeah. You know, like, so you would think like, damn, that's really low for Travis Scott. But again, now they're settling down in the fours, fives. But if you're going to drop so many next year when you said it was over, and maybe that's why people were buying them up because you had said this is the last Jordan one ever. But now it's like, oh, here's five more colorways. It makes people, it waters it down and it makes people like care as less. Like the only reason why, another reason why I think like, at least for the first couple colorways, they were all kind of like, unique in their own way but now that they're also making them look super similar it takes away from that that feeling and even um it's just gonna make it kind of like how the yeezys are like bro everybody loves 350s but now it's like uh you people buy them to wear them you know what i mean and they buy them at fucking retail not saying that travis's are gonna go for retail but i think it'll be like a more realistic price to where like i think this canary will probably be one of those ones where we we see it first where they're not gonna i mean I might be wrong, shit. They might not hit fucking a thousand, but it's hard to call it too because it also depends on what what else is hot at the time. Cause that also determines like, okay, well, this is what people are wearing right now. So it either drives up the price of certain things or it drives it down. Like another one from this year, I, I think it just came out, but the Futuras, I think they'll go up eventually just because of his name and um there really hasn't been any other good like SBs from this year. A lot of the Rainbow Box stuff too should be going up uh, once it starts disappearing, since that's all recent. Like, uh, what's a good one? Like, I think the mummies will retain value, just because it's like fun and they're u unique in their way. And fucking um, all the lobsters are always safe too, because those. Uh, I mean, I when the purple and red, orange, eh, purple and green ones came out, what were we selling them for? Like four or five hundred bucks. And now they're 1500 2K. So um, still certain pairs like that are safe. But as far as like regular Jordans, the only ones that are, I think are safe to where you make at least a, a hundred bucks over whatever the fuck, um, like classic colorways, like how we see with the reimagined like uh, threes and fours. So. Got it, got it. And then uh, uh, let's see, one shoe that Jordan brand needs, a, that needs Jordan brand needs a retro. Raptor 7s. Ooh. Uh, I would like the OG 17s, like the, the Magic colorway or the Wizards colorway, whatever, the white, blue, and black. Um, I would like those, but if they drop them the way they did these lightnings, then maybe they'll have the same reception. But, um, yeah, I, I'm tired of seeing, like, the same shoes get retro all the time. Like, yeah, like, we have enough Jordan 1s right now between that and the fucking Travis Scott, you know what I mean? Okay, another question. What what Jordan shoe can you rock forever? That's not a Jordan one. That's not a Jordan one. Out of the question. Fuck, that one's tough. But low key, those new Brad Force. Yeah, that's a really good one. Not the new 2019. The new ones. I think yeah. the new one will the, look good beat up. Yeah, that leather wear is in better than that new buck. Yeah, because uh. white cement threes I love. It's like probably my, one of my pair of shoes, but that crease. Even though these fours get it, but it's a black shoe, so you don't really see it as much. Yeah, I was going to say fours in general, but um, black cement three also. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, black yeah. cement threes. Black cement threes. All right. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, all right. So as far as uh, cl like streetwear and clothing is concerned, um, do you think that Supreme will ever go back to like what it was or it was just... You never it know. Came, it came and it went. It might cycle again with a new generation of people, like the people that are way younger right now. They might look into it when they're like, when they have a little bit of more bread, like get jobs, blah, blah, blah. And they'll be like, oh, I want the Supreme from 2020. I want the Supreme from 2019, 2022. Oh, this piece was really good. Let's gas it up and make it be a thousand. Because that's exactly, essentially what happened with old Supreme. Yeah. It was just like, not even my generation, the generation right before that was just like, oh, box logos, boom, a rack. Like, so all these people were gassing it up where it drove the market so crazy. So you never know. It might be a whole new generation coming in, let's say, in 2030. 
mm-hmm. and they might be like, yo, 2021 Supreme was so good. 2022 Supreme was so good. Let's buy it all up and put these prices up and sync. Cause that's all it is. That's all resale is. It's finding a niche and gassing it up and a- obtaining most of it. I mean, for example, like, like there's certain pieces, like let's say historic glamour and stuff like that, that are just like gassed up and you're like, holy shit, like, <laughs> There's a market for this, yeah. but it's because people are collecting it and it's vice versa. So it's always, there's always something to be sold in a way, you know? I think also like depending on whoever's like hot at the time, if they're like seen wearing certain pieces, I think it goes hand in hand with it too. Because it's like when Travis was having that run where he was wearing certain SBs and it made, it drove the market up because he was like the hottest thing on the planet. Or even during that time where Supreme started blowing up, uh, like crazy and fucking like odd future and tyler was fucking wearing the camp caps and he drove the market up for that so i think it goes hand in hand with both like the nostalgia that chris is talking about and, and like all, a cycle yeah. yeah a cycle of like oh maybe whoever's hot at that time is also mixing it in with whatever they got going on so both of those together because at the end of the day that's that's what this world is it's always what's the next thing but it's a cycle of what's the next thing like okay like we're bringing back this or we're bringing back that it's it's always like that like right now people are thinking of the next thing they're going to try to bring back and it's going to be the thing that people are going to want to buy all right so what's one collab once one, one streetwear collab that you think the streets need 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 fuck or something you would like to see or something that you would like to see happen again easy twos damn. <laughs> easy ones damn that's just me because i like that shoe um yeah but easy ones would be cool just because they kind of like they stick out a lot more and they're like way more unique than the fucking um like easy twos are unique too but like you got something like this that kind of looks like an easy two or like other trainers that blend a little bit more but like that easy one it's nothing else looks like it in, in my opinion yeah but streetwear collab that we need i don't know because for example like if like for me i feel like louis vuitton supreme was cool but i just feel like it was underwhelming for me like it was just like it, it it did what it did. It was it had its staple loud pieces like bam, Louis it was, Vuitton it Supreme a brand. But to fucking me, it overload. wasn't as good as like what Kim Jones was doing mainline compared to the Supreme LV. Like yeah, it was sick. Like even this Stone Island Dior collab, it's sick. It's fucking. I think it's amazing, but it's expensive. Fucking pair of shorts, Fragment One. You know that's the way I saw it. I was just like, fuck, am I gonna buy a pair of shorts for twenty six hundred dollars? <laughs> like no. The jacket's nine bands, you know, the nice, nice jacket. Yeah. It's like how many words are you really gonna get out of that nine bands? You yeah. think if it was a, if it was a more obtainable, it would be like a hotter item? Oh yeah, like for example, it's just it's still a crazy price, but if those shorts were a rack, I'd be like, Yeah, I'll buy them. Like I'll sell some shit. But the fact that I have to move twenty six hundred dollars worth of shit to get these shorts, no. That's a lot of money for a yeah. pair of fucking shorts. Even that. I was looking at uh I love Prada and I was looking at like these cargos and I was just like, Two bands? fuck like i was just like nah i'll pass um but i don't know if there's anything that the streets need i would say collab wise i feel like one thing that is happening right now is a lot of people are paying attention to like smaller brands and up and coming designers and stuff like that yeah or like you're looking at this stuff and you're like yo this shit's really good um so i feel like a lot of people are getting into like the smaller brand which is cool I also feel like uh, a lot of athletes are like repping like syndicate mm-hmm. or like you know like Mario's people like yeah. I feel like they're jumping on like the whole like smaller brand deal. Yeah, like I mean, wh- what a perfect person to look at is Cortez. Yeah, his brand's going crazy right now, and I even um, me and Steven talk about it all the time, and I'm like, bro, like I feel like your brand is on the up, menace. Mm-hmm. But I I tell him like I feel like you as a person could probably get out there more. Mm-hmm because that's what people like you know they want you to be attainable yeah they like and that I, familiarity it's a different personality but yeah. it's cool because even he comes out to the runs because it's like oh i want to be seen a little more here blah 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 and we talk about it all the time but i feel like his stuff is really good and obviously he has a lot of athletes wearing it rappers too where like now people are like oh shit this brand's cool and again it's been 10 years so mm-hmm. it's like that's one thing i always tell people like a lot of people right now continuously where do you get your ideas from blah 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 and i'm just like bro like anything you like can be a cool idea like yeah. anything literally that's what syndicate is it's like oh i think this is cool i like this movie or i like this blah 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 and to me 
it's not really a brand. It's just like, I'm going to make it. Like the floral tea, I didn't think it was going to sell as well as it did just because I was just like, nobody knows what Twiggy is really. Um, and it was more of like, I like this. I just bought a 68 Avedon picture, um, which I was like, fuck, I found this shit for a good price. And I was like, I'm going to make a Twiggy tea because I found this picture. So it's just certain things, niches that I liked. And I think... You just got to be continuous because you could, yeah, you could drop your first initial launch and it's going to do well. It's just based on like, oh, my friends fuck with me, mm -hmm. but you got to be consistent and you got to be able to take that punch when you do, like the nightmare hat. We didn't sell yeah. one fucking hat the day of the drop. Yeah. The, the camel black one too. Like yeah. maybe our homies bought it. Uh, Sam death club came in. Yeah. And I think he might've been one of the only couple people that bought it. And it, it was him being like, this is a good hat and him supporting his homies. But it was a dud. Mm -hmm. We did. We do a podcast, and everybody sees the fucking hat, and they're like, "Where's that hat?" And I was just like, "Damn!" Like, and we restocked it. But now that hat is like our signature hat, the camel with the red. Yeah. Where even somebody was wearing a camel with red, and he <laughs> forwarded it to us and tagged us, and I'm like, "Bro, it's not our hat. It's that just another funny. red camel hat." But <laughs> it's just like it's become like the the signature Cindy look, you know. What's uh what's one uh piece of uh garment or thing that you would maybe like want to do something in the future? I would want to do my like me separately. It'll still be through Cindy cuz everything I would say flows through here, but I would want to do my own like cut and sew collection, but it's one of those things where I know it's probably not going to sell great. But I would if one, if we're like at that level where like yo I could take this much amount of money and be okay with taking a hit of it not selling. Um, I would do like a whole line because I, I'm in genuinely into like fitment of clothes and stuff like that. So I would want to do like a shit that I wear, zip up flannel with like a good shape to it, a padded flannel, padded jacket, a bomber, just shit that I like or my own denim. Um, but denim is really hard, bro. Like denim is hard to make. What about some shorts? Like uh, a, like, like for a example, cargo. those not even for example, those leopard shorts, bro. Everybody loves them shits. Yeah. And that shirt was b literally just made and designed to be breathable. Like, it was like, I want to wear boxers in public, literally. And that's why people like it because it's a people running it, people hooping it, and they're like, yo, this is like super light. Like, it feels like you're almost wearing nothing in a way. So now I'm just like, we, when we did it with mechanics, it, it hit too because it was that was the point of it. It was for you to literally feel free. And now I'm just like, we, we got to do a black one because you have people hooping in the leopard shorts. To me, it's just hilarious, you know, because it's a fucking leopard short. Yeah. But now I'm like, oh, I'll do a black one or something. Are they sold out? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, there's one or two here and there, but. Very light. The first time I did it with mechanics, they fucking sold instantly. Like, just because people tried it on and they would see me and the round two staff in New York wear it every day. And it's a good print, pause. Yeah. It's. it's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, stuff like that, like, I would want to design, like, a whole look. It's, it's not even design, just curate a whole look where it's, like, yeah, it's available all the time. Sick, sick, sick. Uh, any accessories? You're not, big, you're not big in accessories. Like a bag or something, or a little... Maybe a side bag? A little side bag. A side bag. I was thinking of doing a carabiner. Carabiner uh, would be tight. And just say syndicate. Yeah, I see. Both, something like that. But again, it's just like stuff that I like. And I think that's where people, I would say, look into it a little too deep. Where I'm just like, bro, just do certain things. Steven said, what did he say in the podcast? That he saw somebody selling their wristband or like their bracelet with their name on it. And he's just like, damn, I could do that with my own. Like, yeah. it's like stuff like that where like, I look at this and I'm like, I'm wearing a Nike Special Projects SP. One that I got from Mercurials. And this, how, how long has this lasted? Fucking 10 years. Yeah. Fuck, this carabiner. Yeah. It came from Ronaldo's signature shoe at Nike, and yeah. they would come in the pack. And it's lasted me that long, so this is a really good carabiner. Yeah, they did well. Fuck, that's yeah. crazy. I didn't know you had that one for that long. Yeah, so this one I got it at Riff. Yeah, I've lost my keys, but... <laughs> <laughs> but not the carabiner. But not the carabiner. But yeah, like stuff, like literally, like I did a basketball. Yeah. Like, again, but the basketball didn't do as well as we thought. Yeah. But... To me, it's cool as fuck. Like, who the fuck has a pink basketball? Even Jared, first thing he asked for, we had we were saving Jared's every drop. I was holding him in Excel because he's a big supporter of us. So when he came back, he had a giant undefeated bag filled with syndicate shit. But I didn't think to give him the ball, and he's a fucking hooper. <laughs> and first thing he asked me, he says, like, yo, you still have basketballs? And I was just like, yeah, and I gave him one. Like, That's tight. But 
that that was a cool thing to do like who like and it's actually a really good ball yeah that shit's nice like you fucking bounce it pause and all yeah, that and shit then even like, now it's like good. i'm already working on new stuff with uh skinny like we're doing another hat like another crazy hat even though that one's not even out yet um we're redoing the museum which is still gonna be the same museum but like i remember like growing up when i when i was into diamond the back of his um the, they were shaped in diamonds they were shaped in diamonds mm. yeah so i told him i'm like yo let's do a s that's clip out, clip on clip off inside like just adding more detail to the to the hats where we're not gonna have to use the yupong hat that everybody I, people always ask me that too they're like what's your hat yeah. i'm like yupong unstructured Easy. yeah no gatekeeping just here take it bro like but now it's gonna be like our own hat it's still gonna have the same shit but it's gonna be like a real syndicate hat full branding everywhere yeah. Yeah. So that that's in the works. What else did I tell him? Would we ever see a little Cindy mascot, like a little toy or something? Oh, so I want to do I want to do all of us as homies characters. Oh, yeah, that was but, funny. <laughs> like literally, like as homies characters, <laughs> oh, my but like love. our own way. Yeah. Like sp- like not dressed like like literally like homies, but just like us. Like l- literally. So I told Skinny, I'm like, yo, because Skinny's really talented. I'm like, draw all of us. <laughs> put me with the camera put the and camera it, yeah so it's like, but yeah like your shit. own character yeah and then making the li- i'm trying to do the the little fucking actual toys and then put them in the supreme thing and people could get them you know it'd be hilarious i think that should be hilarious even though who who the fuck's gonna want a brisk fucking character <laughs> but it'd be funny, funny you know like if you could get one i'm right? sure people would want to collect all of them okay. yeah but it'll be funny you know to me that's just doing shit that i thought would be cool just having fun with it too yeah, yeah. but yeah. at the end of the day like random stuff like we did a cup to shit and sell but people at the track love that shit they're oh, always yeah, carrying yeah. their cindy things yeah the tote bags yeah, another tote, tote would be good we need to do another tote people love the totes yeah i still have uh my girl uses all of them she yeah. has uh the i don't one. have any of them oh word yeah what, what about you dc anything you want to see um cindy i always with? like fucking accessories like accessories are fun i would like a like a another tote but like something that's a little bit bigger than the one we use like i think a like something that could fit two shoes as an example like something that's a little bigger because i know people like the last one we did that i didn't think was the best quality but there's people that bring it in all the time the blue one. Oh yeah um and it, it's lasted people a lot of a lot a long time over a year yeah and people still bring it in like perfect and shit like that i think i have a couple of those at the crib but um like an updated version of that something that's a little bit more structured whether it be cotton or canvas um because i think especially people that are in our world they always have a little bag with them carrying something you know what i mean um that's something that i think is cool or even like um it, like he said the cut and sew is harder but like maybe a pair of fucking um like cargo shorts oh it's cooked sorry cl- sorry clothes bro yeah, yeah damn yeah right. trevor's too that sucks um what's it called uh yeah, and then, like, all the little accessories, I think, like, it's just fun things to do. Like, people love the fucking keychains that uh, we throw in the orders and obviously the stickers, too. Um, and just, like, the branding as a whole is, is fucking fun. I love the pins, too. Anytime we do a cool pin, that shit's fun. Um, but I'm cur- excited about the homie shit because that shit is fucking hilarious. It'll be funny. Yeah. Any sneak peek, like, uh, stuff that's coming up recently, like, in the next few months? The, this hat. <laughs> the, well, that hat is coming soon, but now we're already developing another one. Um, I tuned into the F1 race, and I liked this car. And I just was just like, oh, this car would look sick on a hat. And obviously, all the logos would be flipped into Cindy. So I was just like, oh, maybe that. Obviously, the fucking um, the museum. But I think going forward, I'm focusing more on just like the, like the Syndicate logo. Like, I'm not going to try to flip that many, like, movies and stuff like that. Just more just straight syndicate. Updating it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. But, like, also, like, because it's a lot, bro. I have so many fucking shirts. It's literally insane. Yeah. Like, I literally look at my stack and I was just like, it's too many shirts. And that's the last thing I want. It's just, like, I want, like, somebody actually said, like, it was in the comments, they were like, yo, if you had this much, um, you could always have one in stock. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, like the inline shirt, like old the museum logo or like the fucking establishment. A lot of people ask for the establishments he brought back to yeah. a little pocket hit joint. But yeah, we'll see, you know, we'll see where we go from there. But uh, yeah, I think that's a good way to end it. To what do you guys want to see too? Yeah, let us know. Yeah. In the comments. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>